following Jesus is better not easy. All right, so I'm going to start out with my favorite verse, and I've got my Bible here, of course, but I'm going to start out with my favorite verse. Um, I love this Bible, by the way. My mom gave me this a long time ago, and um, it's an ESV Bible, but it's got like note-taking abilities, and uh, I haven't used it as much. It's got the ability to take notes? Yeah, yeah, it has, like, note margins, <laughs> you know? Um, I have done a lot of notes in here, but I often don't really use a physical Bible. It was so funny to me because um, because I was at this retreat a little while ago, and, you know, I'm serving in a position that's, like, almost like a pastoral position, right? And um, And it's just funny to me because, like, I, I was about to do a devotional and I'm, like, I'm going through everything and I have everything prepared right ahead of time, but I'm like finalizing everything I want to say, making sure I have it right, blah, blah, blah. And I realized I didn't have a physical Bible because I'm so used to using it on my phone and doing different things there. Wow. <laughs> and so like I didn't, well, and I was traveling too. Yeah, so yeah. it was like, I brought so much stuff, camera gear and everything else with me. Right. Yeah. Um, for the whole week that I was gone. And uh, so I turned to one of my mentors and I was like, yo, can I borrow your Bible? Cause I don't have a physical like paper Bible, <laughs> you know? And on this retreat, like it's, kind of like a no technology sort of thing like yeah you know so having my phone out in front of everybody would kind of look weird yeah um anyway it was just funny to me but I, I do like my physical bible I did not bring it with me on that trip but the first one that I want to talk about is um it's actually my favorite verse uh that I've held for a long time that's mark two seventeen, and um what we're going to do is kind of focus on some of these verses, but we'll probably read some context around it. So um, this is the this is the passage in which Jesus calls Matthew. And in and, and Mark, he's called Levi, right? But um, we'll kind of go through. So starting in chapter 2, verse 13, and then we'll kind of read through. If you want to follow along, you can. Oh. Um, it's up to you. What was it? <laughs> Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 is where we're starting. So it goes like this. Uh, he went out again behind, uh, beside the sea, and all the crowd was coming to him, and he was teaching them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as he reclined at the table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners were reclining with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. And the scribes of the Pharisees, when they saw that he was eating with the sinners and tax collectors, said to the disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. What was that? Mark 2.17. Oh, I thought you said Matthew. No, it's about Matthew. It's about Matthew. Oh. <clears throat> okay, well... <laughs> I'll read the verse that we're going to focus on again. So the verse that we're going to focus on is Mark 2.17. And that is, and when Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came to call the right, not the righteous. I came to, I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. So this for me is my, is my absolute favorite verse. And here's, here's why, because I think that so often as Christians, especially being a Christian who grew up in church myself, right? Um, I, I tend to be around a lot of these Christians who are very kind of like self-righteous or like mm. they're kind of like, um, how dare you, you know, sort of thing. Um, and there's a balance there. There's a balance of upholding God's standard, mm -hmm. but also, um, understanding where people are at in their lives, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so like what? give an example, like, not a specific example. Well, so Jesus in this example, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He's sitting at a table with tax collectors and sinners in the chosen. This is portrayed as having like prostitutes and sinners and everybody's there, right? Mm -hmm. Like Rivka and all of her people from the red quarter. And then, you know, all these different things, like they're all at this table with him and he's in, he's having a dinner with them, mm -hmm. right? Which is similar to what's happening here. We're, we're seeing the tax collectors, we're seeing the sinners and the Pharisees are freaking out because they're like, how could you be associated with any of these people, right? Um, and, and so for me, like for me in my life, I really struggled with this too because, because like, for example, like swearing, right? Mm -hmm. I've probably said less than 20 swear words in my life, right? Mm -hmm. It's just not something that I do naturally. It's not something that I ever grew up with. It's not something that, um, you know, like my mom would swear. Um, my brother definitely would swear, like people around me swore, my friends would swear, uh, but I really felt convicted about it from a very young age of mm -hmm. like, no, like this is not something I'm, I'm going to be known for. It's not something that I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But there was a point in my life where I could not be around any, anything that was derogatory or swearing in any way. Mm 
right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which meant that I was very, um, I alienated myself from a lot of the world, mm -hmm. right? Which it's good to be holy. It's, it's good to be different than the world. Set apart. Set apart, right? But it's not good to just shut yourself in a prison and never interact with the world mm -hmm. because we're supposed to be in the world, just mm -hmm. not of it, right. right? And so for me, I really struggled with this understanding of like, God came for these people. Mm. So we have to interact with these people. Mm -hmm. And even when I see like things online where I'm like, like uh, it just makes me cringe, you know, mm -hmm. like of certain people that, that act up in our comment section or whatever else, like, um, I have to remind myself of this, this mm -hmm. verse all the time because God did not come for the people that are perfect. In fact, no one's perfect, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't come for the people that are already good enough. He didn't come for the people that are already set, right? He came for the sinners. Yeah. And so that means from the top to the least, right? Like all of us, right? He came for the sinners. Mm -hmm. And so that means if, if Matthew's a tax collector, the worst of the worst of the worst in Jewish society, he still came for him. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I also struggle with, with that. Not necessarily the verse. Obviously, the verse is true. Yeah. Um, but uh, the line, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because there is a line. There is a, there is a line where you're not just going to uh, go and, and uh, conform. Yeah. So that brings me to, can I read mine? Well, let's talk about this a little bit more, and then we'll jump into yours. But yeah. Okay. Um, like, we can't just give in. We can't just... Um, there's a, there's just a line because some people would use this verse and be like, see, yeah, like I'm okay with, uh, hanging out and drinking right. and getting right. drunk and, right. but that's not what Jesus is doing. He's not the one doing the things that are wrong. Right. right. Yeah. In fact, these are the people, these people are there, but they've already turned away. Like he's called them. You get what I'm saying? Maybe well, at not least, all of at them. At least Matthew. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. This is something that I'm actually thinking about for the chosen season three, because like Rivka is coming back in. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. So like, this is the type of things I think about when I think about just people in general, mm -hmm. Rivka encountered Jesus right? Mm -hmm. And she was obviously changed somewhat by the experience, but that doesn't mean that she's a follower of Jesus, mm -hmm. right? So when she comes back in season four, like, are we going to see her change at all? And I see that in people in my life too, right? Mm -hmm. To where it's like, I've, I've seen them mm -hmm. encounter Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen people like my brother encounter Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And yet I, I see how sin is just leading their lives, mm -hmm. right? And so there's this like, um, like you're saying, there's this balance, but it's like, it, it's not an excuse for all the sin that's being done. Right. It is, it is a, um, an and, right? It's not a, um, how do I explain this? It's, we have to encounter them so that we can affect them, right? And that's how Jesus kind of talks about it as well. Explain that. So as like, okay, so we always talk about like hate the sin, not the sinner, mm -hmm. right? Or like when people come into church, we need to accept them as they are, right? Mm -hmm. And it's true that Jesus does accept them how they, how they are, but he does not expect them to stay there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so that is the place where we find that standard, right, right? right? Because I can't just do anything that I want as a Christian. Right. I can. I'm free to do that. But it doesn't, it doesn't help anybody, right? right? And if I'm a follower of Christ, he's going to ask me to do things that are blessings. He's going to ask me to do things that are going to build up the world and not tear it down, right. you know? And so for me, um, it's not that those things, like I've talked about a lot of times before, it's not that those things save me mm -hmm. because only Christ saves me. Mm -hmm. If it were up to my good works, I couldn't do anything, right? Yeah. But when I am saved, I will have, I, I will want to do those good works. Mm -hmm. I will want to walk in that standard mm -hmm. and do the things that God has asked me to do. Right. Right. So anyway, that is my, that's my favorite verse. It's something that I lean on a lot because for me, this is the crux of, of who I want to be in my heart. Right. Like mm -hmm. I, I want to be able to love sinners, but then also be able to help them through what they need help through. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and to walk them in a place where they can walk closer to God and they can, and they can really truly trust him, you know, yeah. um, which is what Jesus allows them to do here. And even defending them, not their sin, but defending them from people who would say, I'm righteous and I'm telling you what they're right. doing is wrong. Right. Yeah. It's the self-righteousness that he's not with, right. not down with. Right.
Hey, Brandon here. If you want to check out this full episode, you can do that on patreon.com slash the snipe life. This is the best way to help us to support what we're doing here on the Better Not Easy channel. Thank you very much. So just remember that following Jesus is better not easy.